Hi YouTube, it is time to talk about another controversial topic which isn't that much of a controversy, it's kind of true, especially at the moment with the state of the rule. We have to talk about why tank isn't fun and there is a plethora of things to dig into and you know just I'm going to try my level best to simplify it because as always Overwatch has a lot of new players and I'm sure some concepts to them might be alienated when they go to other content creators. So on my channel, I try to tone things down into speakable English that everyday person who plays Overwatch might that might be casual or competitive can understand. I try not to delve too deep, but just deep enough to where I can take the casual person and make them understand the concept, whether they are in favor uh, or against that concept or whether they agree or disagree. Guys, before we talk about why tank isn't fun, I just have one thing to ask to my general audience. Guys, 88% of you are not subscribed, but you come back and watch the videos over and over again. So I ask kindly, please hit that subscribe button, hit that like button. It helps me with the algorithm. It helps me get money from YouTube for free and you don't have to do anything. But if you want to support me financially, super chat down below until we get a Patreon started. Now, with that being said, and those pleasantries out of the way, let's talk about why tank is the most, you know, well, it's not fun right now. Let's, let's not kid ourselves, right? I'm going to talk about this in a bit of an informal, unscripted way. And we're going to discuss the state of tank and why it's really bad right now. And I want to make the entire player base understand not just like tank damage but also the support players because at the moment they are well they're kind of the gatekeepers of fun for the tank role and support players themselves don't realize this which i feel like contributes to the problem in a bigger way now the tank role is unfun because of a lot of things first of all balance is not from the pov of skill to value ratio and the role that ends up feeling this the most is tank for example when characters like torbjorn or bastion become overpowered and they still are yes they still are for the overall general player base they are very overpowered when these characters become overpowered or let's say strong or quote unquote viable as picks that can be used in mostly any situation they tend to overwhelm players that are still on a learning curve, like for example, uh, that want to learn something that does require a bit of a skill to value ratio that requires a lot of time commitment. For example, if I'm playing something like Winston, I understand that I'm not going to be the best Winston right away. I, I, I'm going to go through a learning process of making mistakes, uh, but I want to be able to learn from them. So when I'm playing against characters like Genji, Tracer, Sojourn, Ash, you know, and even Reaper to a certain extent, like, I'm able to understand where and why I got punished, but then you bring in characters like Torbjorn and Bastion that at the immediate mistake, like, for example, I made a dive, but I wanted to just use this dive as a means to force out cooldowns, and then drop away, and then dive again. Well, in this first dive where I wanted to bait key cooldowns, block them with my bubble, uh, that doesn't really happen, because the moment I jump into a composition built around Bastion and Torbjorn, I'm going to get instantly melted, and if I do not swap, of the Winston I'm going to be feeding and constantly putting my team at a disadvantage. Now, can I still play Winston in that scenario and try to win? Yes, of course. Is it going to feel good? No, of course not. Why? Because I'm constantly getting bullied and I need a plethora of resources in an uncoordinated environment, regardless whether it's ranked or quick play. In fact, quick play is more competitive nowadays than ranked. You know, regardless, like it puts more stress on you and your team that we must play more perfect. And this is a problem, not just for the tank role, but this is a problem in Overwatch in general, that the characters that are harder to play to, to be able to play them right you must be picture perfect if you are playing a character like genji you must be picture perfect you cannot miss a single shuriken you cannot miss a single combo you cannot make a single mistake with the dash if you are able to meet these requirements you will pop off in the hero same thing goes for tracer and sombra you cannot mess up your how you use your blinks you cannot mess up how you use your engagement tools on sombra with virus and hack because if you mess up any of these you are immediately told you don't get value, you must leave and you must try again when your cooldowns come back online. This is fine because when Tracer, Somber, Genji, get, get, or even Echo and Farah are able to get max value from their abilities, uh, being able to land them on the targets and secure a kill, they are rewarded for it and that's okay. Because it's not a simple button press that I, I press and I immediately bring so much high value pressure, right? There's a series of events that needs to happen. For example, if I play Echo, I must land my stickies. And then I must be in a position where I can follow up with my E. And then with the E, I must track the target. Similarly, we can talk about this with Genji, Sombra, and Tracer. You know, you guys get what I'm trying to say, right? But when characters that don't require that level of skill, like Bastion, okay, well, uh, Bastion and Torbjorn are very simple. Like, if the tank comes in, I just press Shift. Or in Torbjorn's case, I press E. I look at this tank, I hold one button, and the tank gets deleted. The, and, and this can even apply to the squishies that they might be fighting there is no like 
the the thought process the level of layers that we have to go through in order to get value is so greatly reduced that it's like well why would you ever play any other character other than bastion and torbjorn when they can fit into most situations and and very very rarely in uncoordinated environments will people actually work together to tear you apart and all that's going to require is your teammates to just pocket you a little bit and you'll constantly bring like insane value and i see people ranking up like this all the time i see threads on competitive overwatch i see threads on the forums where people are still complaining about well, passion and torbjorn from the dps category now what about the tank rule right? we, we are talking about the tank rule so let me circle you guys back in i wanted to lay out a foundation because from the dps role the most popular role this is the easiest to feel that oh my god like bash and torbjorn i hate these guys they just pick these characters and i cannot do anything from the tank role at the moment we have a tank version of bastion where you just exist and get instant value and that is malga now to one side of the argument you could say that well malga is a fun tank because he's actually able to put out damage and pressure but here's the thing malga is struggling against squishies because they're able to outpace and avoid the sustained damage that he wants to put out so it forces him into this very basic playstyle that i don't understand how the developers didn't see this coming where it's just well i just melt every other tank in the game and he and and really he has no bad matchup it's 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 if you're good on malga if you're good at tracking there is no bad matchup until you run into the mirror where it just comes down to whose supports do what and what supports are you playing that will shut down or you know enable or disable the other manga and and that's where tank begins to feel more and more frustrating because as we enter these metas where if we run into like a mirror meta of okay we must play manga or okay we have to play roadhog it becomes less about the tank players themselves and more about well what are your supports playing right and this is where the frustration begins to stem of course there's a wider issue in all of this i'm trying to like simplify it so it's easier to understand what i'm trying to say is like for example you're playing malga they're playing malga right it's like, even if we just take this mirror for an example that okay fine maybe the tank mirror is quote unquote fun when you get into this tank mirror you're like okay who can bait out the e who can like make a mistake like if this guy sh shifts in we can easily punish him because it'll be a 1v5 in that case Whatever the case might be, if your supports are playing Mercy Lucio and your Mauga and they're playing Ana Kiriko or Ana Bap or whatever, you are going to have the most miserable experience. And I say this a lot, like a lot of people don't realize that the tank fun is locked into the support role. Like if your supports are playing appropriate supports for your tank pick, you're allowed to have fun let me use an example which tank has always been quote unquote fun to play but has been misunderstood by the community as to why people are picking it that is roadhog i give a second there for people to figure it out it's roadhog roadhog has always been fun to play but why is he fun to play is it because haha hook combo i kill i uh, i i move on like big you know um big like you know i pop off big yes there is a bit of an aspect to that but what is it about roadhog that is different to the other tanks roadhog plays like a dps what does that mean it means roadhog as a tank is able to do his thing by himself without relying on anyone else and and if the roadhog is not performing it's completely down to that roadhog player why because he's expected to pop off by himself he's not playing a reinhardt a winston where he has to facilitate a team comp or people around them in order to be able to pop off yes there's some sense of individuality in there but it's not as like to the height that roadhog brings I, guys my english is a little bit here and there i hope you understand what i'm trying to talk about my my point is is that roadhog doesn't rely on the team as much as reinhardt does so it to roadhog if you are playing mercy lucio mercy zen he doesn't care he's fine with it because he's like yeah go enable the dps go play reddit lucio playstyle i don't care i'm gonna pop off myself and and let's all just pop off together like you can play fire mercy with a lucio running around with a soldier or a tracer and you guys can pop off with the roadhog comp like from a basic like you know casual perspective of you know let's say all the way up to like maybe early masters right you can get away with this type of comp if assuming everybody is mechanic good and doing their job on those respective heroes i listed but but that is why roadhog gets picked because he just he doesn't have to rely on support so playing him feels natural now if i play and and the same thing goes for characters like doomfist and junker queen they can kind of care for themselves they don't need somebody else to pop up with them no doomfist might especially on the current state of doomfist we have a video on him coming up i know i've been promising the doomfist video but trust me like i need a lot of time to to structure the points properly but when it comes to playing a tank like doomfist you need follow-up like it, 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 they've they've nerfed doomfist like hell like for everything that Doomfist does, 
you need to be able to have some form of follow-up otherwise you don't get value and the same thing goes for other tanks orissa is very tanky and very good at staying alive but you need follow-up from your team in order to be able to stay in the fight as well as be able to secure kills because orissa has pathetic kill potential she basically has no kill potential at the moment right with the way that they've changed her up and everything you know the same applies to winston as well winston is pretty good at diving disengaging forcing out cooldowns but you need to have some form of follow-up you're expecting your genji tracer to kind of run in with you and secure a kill on the target that you did the classic three two one jump dive on for you know usually it's like a anna in this case because she's very popular so you know the western goes in takes a sleep takes a nade and then the tracer genji come in and secure the kill so the tanks that kind of end up becoming more and more like individualistic they become more fun and more appealing to the player base why because they're less frustrating to play so you characters like roadhog and maybe sigma and doomfist they become very popular i've been seeing them a lot too even zarya she can kind of take care of herself yes optimally speaking you should be playing a good support line with them that does support them but a lot of that fun like aspect of playing like other popular characters like maybe ryan ramatra you know like and even wrecking ball like wrecking ball is horrible for a plethora of reasons but these guys they need even more follow-up so when you don't get it the role feels unfun to play because you're like if i'm playing ryan and i have like a comp of moira zen i feel awkward i'm like okay i mean i have like the basic healing and sure discord is nice but like how am I supposed to get max value from this? Like, max value would be something like Ana plus Lucio, right? Uh, or even, in this case, if I'm willing to compromise uh, Moira Lucio, or uh, uh, Bap Lucio could be amazing too. But my point basically is, is a lot of that stress of tank being fun to play has just been down to the support role. Let's say a team fight happens, a tank walks up, a tank applies pressure. Well, the enemy support says, uh, okay, no, that's not going to happen because I just slept you or I whipshotted you or like I use a mortality field or you Suzu, I deny your complete value, I push you and like then you're forcing the other tank, the, the tank that made the push to like play differently. Like it's crazy how tanks' entire gameplay in Overwatch 2, especially Overwatch 2, without another tank, has just become, I am the puppet of the puppeteer, which is the support role. And yes, there are some characters from the DPS where this applies too. May, Bastion, and Torbjorn are culprits of this too. They also puppeteer the tanks a lot. Like, May controls the tank role in the way that she can set up and deny, you know, space with her, with her walls. So this is kind of like, when we come down to certain characters, I always have this philosophy, it's like, we have to understand for a role, an overall role to feel healthy, there are some characters in this game that we can just not allow to be viable. In my personal opinion, first and foremost, from the damage role, in order for the tank role to feel good, we can never allow Bastion, Torbjorn, and Mei to be overbearing slash overwhelming because they control the tank role way too much. For the average player, it is way too much. If you open the forums, if you open Reddit, if you open any place where you can read a player complaint, these will be the characters from the DPS role, including Sombra, that you will see. Now, for what it's worth, I think the current iteration of Sombra is fine. I think she's a necessary evil to a certain extent. I don't agree with the EMP buffs that she got. I spoke about this in, in the patch note video, so go watch that if you're interested. But I think Sombra is fine. I think characters like Bastion, May, and Torbjorn, they're, they're a bit too much, right? Reaper is also a healthy, quote-unquote, counter to tanks because he, he, like, he has a fair game plan. He has a fair gameplay style. He doesn't, like, overwhelm the tank. There's a, there's a window for you to be able to respond, and that's kind of what we want. We want Overwatch to be this fast-paced shooter, but with a fair and respectful window for people to be able to interact. Bastion, Torbjorn, May, they discourage interactions. They encourage the idea that I've isolated you. There's nothing you can do about it. Unless your team really helps you a lot, you're not going to be able to stop me. And this is not good for the overall player base. I cannot view everything from the lens of a top 500 gm player like a lot of other content creators do right i have to be considered that there's a million people out there that are playing this game not at the level because that level is just the top you know one percent top 0.5.3 percent we have to exclude them in these type of conversations however i know a lot of those content creators a lot of those streamers a lot of those professional players they echo my sentiments as well that yeah maybe some of these characters they're a bit too silly when they become overly viable you know like do we all remember that junkrat meta in season two or three i think where he was a bit too strong and just one-shotting everything like we have to pick our poison should it be as easy as bastion junkrat may or torbjorn and yes may is really not that difficult to play and i'm tired of the gaslighting that that oh my gosh she's so crazy like in about like three or four games you can understand her game plan and her wall positioning uh, and of course there's skill expression in the wall but that's about it rest of her is just i spam down these buttons and i can get insta value like may is like come on guys like stop gaslighting it like if, if you think may is like challenging for you okay uh, more power to you she's a skillful here to you but in my personal opinion compared to the rest of the dps roster 
re relatively like she's medium difficulty that's as far as i'm willing to go with her but she's not as hard as people make it out to be dash and torbjorn incredibly easy to play and they bring value in so many ways right i plan on even just making a video called why i don't like the design behind Bastion and Torbjorn and maybe that's another video for another day from the tank role I like I'm willing to here's the funny thing I'm willing to take some characters being okay like Roadhog and Orisa even though they can be frustrating to play against there are ways to deal with them that we've learned over time however when it comes to a character like Mauga I think this is the most poorly designed tank that I've ever seen and a character like him can never be allowed to be viable because we've learned that having a bastion in a tank form ruining like all the other characters in that role and their gameplay experience is just not fun right it's very hard to balance mauga and in my personal opinion they will never find the right balance for mauga i feel like it's going to be another brick situation where every season or every other like patch we'll be seeing some awkward mauga changes to make him feel good or make him feel bad just because he became either overtuned or undertuned unfortunately his design is just bad and i really hope that they can like figure him out but i have no hope but for now his current iteration they have to figure him out they have to figure out these easy to play low skill like you know characters that just anybody can pick up and get insta value it's crazy to me that that mauga is just shredding through tanks i was playing you know yesterday with my friends and you know a guy he didn't play for like eight months he came i'm like yeah dude mauga is pretty funny he's like yeah i like mauga he picks up mauga and i and i and i shit you not he's playing against a gm doom and ram player throughout the course of the nepal game that we were playing and he was destroying that guy I was he was destroying that guy and it's just sad to see that that's what the game has kind of come down to and i really hope going forward we can kind of balance with skill to value in mind because it will help the overall game just feel better now of course if you guys want to disagree you can do so in the comments down below if you agree you can do so in the comments down below but please keep it under a, re a respectful connotation with that being said again i echo the same sentiments as before if you guys want to support the channel for free you can do so by hitting like and subscribe and you know commenting also helps with the algorithm and finally if you want to support me financially super chat until we get a patreon going i will see you guys in the next video thank you so much and once again happy new year